Hey, it's Random Pop Culture, and it's your girls with game, Mr. Many of you guys are wrestling on Twitch's channel. Follow me on my social media platform sites like Twitter and, of course, Twitter, Instagram, um, Brighteon, B Shoot, um, Rumble Out, I see mine, Reddit, just in case this channel gets shut down. God forbid, um, <clears throat> shut down, Shadow Man, Deleted, DDoS, Hack, what have you. Anyways, I know this is almost a week old. I still wanted to react to it because even though it's not the tech end, Street Fighter, and, um, Mortal Kombat stuff. I still like reacting to once in a while. But this dude, I don't know what it is about him, but <laughs> I mean, I heard his music thing before in a super, super old school movie. No one's from like 1991 and 89, early 2000. Granted, I never played any of like the, the first or future King of Fighters game. I think I played King of Fighters 3 through 5, and then after the fifth one, I haven't played ever since, and that was way back in the day. It was like 1998, 99. And after that, I have never played it ever again. It's cause, I guess it's a super expensive to get your hands on on like eBay or Amazon. But it is over here in the United States. It's just that franchise never got as ginormously overpopularized or it didn't become a worldwide phenomenon like with the other three big ones like Tekken, Street Fighter, and Mortal Kombat. Did. Those are going to get popular all over the freaking world. But King of Fighters, for some reason, only got popular as a lot of Spanish Latino um, countries. Central South America. That's why I only ever played like three times ever in my life when I went to go to Mexico to visit my cousins. Ever. So I was blessed enough to even get a chance to play in the mid late 90s, early 2000s, and that shit was still popping off really hard at that time. And then like two other Asian countries, like I think the Philippines and South Korea, is the only other places King of Fighters was ever super popularized besides like Central South America. United States, Canada, it's kind of like a very, very small, low, minuscule. Not very much hype around that type of franchise, unfortunately. It sucks. But then there's other ones, too, that I don't really get that big. I didn't even know about them until, like, 2010, 2012, 2013. When stuff like The Guilty Gear came out and Killer Instincts was a thing, which I didn't even know Killer Instincts was a thing before 2010. I didn't, like, I didn't know it was big in the 90s or in the late 2000s, either, because... I mean, I knew about it a little bit in the 90s. So I played it maybe once or twice in the arcade. I didn't know it was called Killer Instinct, though, because I didn't pay attention... To the arcade cabinet for some reason. I don't know. I thought it was just another version of Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, but it was Killer Instincts. I had no idea it was even playing that at that time. I didn't even know until like once the Xbox 360 and Xbox One came out, and they ended up being exclusively only for the Xbox console, and it's been like that way ever since. It's like like the way um, Xbox treats out the Gears of War franchise does, how they treat the Call of Duty, not Call of Duty, but um, Halo franchise. That's like the same way Nintendo and Sony, they treat all their IPs. You know, nowadays they're spreading them in all three of the consoles. But back in the day, it was like, those console World War Wars were going way harder. I barely even remember the Nintendo Sega Genesis on SNES <laughs> console war back then. I remember maybe hearing about it a little bit, but then again, in elementary school, I didn't have any friends in the whole period. So there's that. <laughs> I mean, my cousins were the only people that were my friends at that time. But anyways... Each one, let's get it in. King of Fighters, um, 15 DLC, Go Nets. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. Go Nets or Go Nets. So, yeah, three, two, one, let's go. Hopefully, you can hear me. Let's do it. Hope it's awesome. It should be. KOF 15. Hopefully, I'm a lot more. Um, let's go. That's only Japanese, they didn't even have no English dub translation in the Bible. Okay. Oh, okay. I some flying in the middle of the Oh, what's this? This is gonna be his final strike in there? Face for a new boss. Damn it. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm going to be playing 
this is my song. <laughs> oh, I just stuck with the lightning after hitting the banana. That would be fucking wild. Dang. Alright. Oh, it's tomorrow. Oh, wow, it's very, very super cool. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, fast overall thoughts, views, and opinions on stuff. Um, ugh, yay. <laughs> I was, I was hoping it'd give me a lot more hype with energy, but then again, it was one, one of those franchises I didn't really get to grow up a lot playing. I only ever played it three times over my life when I was up. And I could have played it on PC anytime I wanted, but when I was in high school, especially in college and community college and all that, that would have been a big no-go for me. Like, it's like studying for all these exams and all these projects and all these tests and all that. I barely had time at all over video games, so I'm going to be like, Maybe once or twice out of a month or every two months. And that was it. And once I started using doing my IRL job at the hotel casino shit, I had as many times as so much time and like to waste and burn as much as I wanted to, as long as I wasn't working on that day. And uh, I don't know, this dude kind of gives me some vibes on that dude, Roy Mustang, that was a full metal alchemist. He kind of reminds me of him with three other, like, um, who was it? It was three other, like, um, fighters from the Guilty Gear series. One was called Kai Kisio. Kai Kisio. Kai Kisiao or Xiu, however you say his name. And then two other ones. <laughs> Leo Wolf. And then I forgot the third name. I don't remember what the third name was, but um kinda gives me the vibes of him and this other two of this one other dude I forgot his name. Damn. I'll leave it in the link in the description box below if I remember to put it down there. Anyway, so let's talk about the three other news I'm gonna talk about. Alright, so let's get to the first one out of the three real quick news headlines. I may or may not do a video one later. Not today, it's probably going to be, I rarely ever do it Wednesday, Thursday, but I might. And everyone already knows who this chick is. Um, Kayleen or Kaylee Kirizuka, Kigarusa, Kegarosa, however you say her last name. I think it's Kigarusa, or Brendan Rose Amaral. She finally signs up with Kit Kat. And I think the first time I talked about it, literally just the other day, I talked about that dude, XQC Felix, signing up with Kit Kat. The Kit Kat, one of Twitch's competitor, and looks like it's... Slowly, slowly becoming a threat to Twitch. Possibly. I mean, it's funny because I, I watched the little, like, <laughs> video she showed on Twitter and I, I had no zero point blank period. Had no idea she was friends with two other actual IRO real life celebrities in that thing. <laughs> just pretty wild. I think one was Jackie Chan and the other one was John Cena, which is wild because literally it's crazy in that order, too, because they literally just finished doing a movie, like, last month, which... I still want to watch. I don't know if I'm going to have to watch in theaters. I might want to watch in like one of the freaking streaming sites or just sail the high seas to see it. So uh, let's just jump into a real quick from Talk Esports. Has Amber become the latest streamers, has become the latest streamers, to leave Twitch for her seventh anniversary. The biggest female streamer on Twitch has been the, hopefully I'm saying this right, epicenter of several controversies that have been on the receiving end of Twitch's penalties for the longest time. While many argue that her content isn't fit to be on Twitch, there is no denying that the fact that the loss of her viewer base will be severely affected, t affecting Twitch. <laughs> you know, so quick hope for our thoughts, views, and opinions real fast. <laughs> As I said before, I said again, the chick needs an introduction. This chick is almost probably a billionaire at this point. I'm surprised they didn't give her a trillion dollar contract with her and Kit. The thing is, if a lot of these people that started originally from Twitch they end up leaving there to go kick or rumble, they better have their open prayer to gosh, oh, just God, fingers fucking crossed that they end up getting all their audiences to go over there with them. Now that's that's where the big um, that's where the big bump in the road ends up. Um, <laughs> that's where they start becoming a little bit of an issue, problematic, unfortunately. So they better also got all their fans that they the fans that support them all these months and years and years of supporting this person. Better hope they end up moving on there, and they better hope they have a way more better settings and a lot more easier way of using Kick. Look at how it is for your easy to use Twitch or YouTube or any of that. So, yeah, let's get into the second quick article. <laughs> this one's crazy, man. I shouldn't be laughing at it, but at the same time, I'm not surprised that this crap happened. So, it says, um, this one's from Eurosports or Euro.com. There's another one from New York Times and another one from uh, Headline, if you're like reading it from there, though. Um, he accused Joe Biden of inappropriately or improperly touching actress and director Eva Longoria, <laughs> aka um, aka Blow Giant, and her 
Bo Biden, Bo Blyden, A.K. Let's Go Brandon. I don't give a fuck what you call them. I'm not getting into politics or any of this here. This may be the one I may talk about in a future video. So maybe. So we'll see. A.K. Um, ice Cream Man. Mr. Hair Sniffer. <laughs> He's been giving something to talk about. After a video circulating on social media networks where he hugs actress and director Eva Longoria. After a screening of Flaming Hot and some internet users indicated that the president has touched improperly on the director. And it, and it is that Eva Longoria visited the White House to present her with the film Flaming Hot where she makes her directorial debut in an effusive show of support. Bresson Blyden hugged the actress. Awkward hug. And uh, you can tell, man, <laughs> this chick will look really, really upset after she hugged him. I don't know. I don't know if it's true or false or any of that, but <laughs> it looks like she didn't want it, man. It really didn't look like she wasn't feeling it. <laughs> That's crazy, man. And at the same time, like, I'm not even going to get into all this shit that dude's, like, fucking guilty of, in my personal opinion, because I will scream at the fucking right top of my goddamn lungs if I start making a rant by him. Run granted, it's not even the whole Democrat-Republican thing. All that shit's a fake control psyop paradigm for FBI, CIA, DNA, NSA. It's all Freemason, Illuminati bullshit. It's all fucking illusion. <laughs> it ain't real anyways. It's just a fake TV show in my personal opinion. I've been away for 15 and a half, 16 years. <laughs> I know a lot of that shit is a fucking lie and deception in my personal opinion. It doesn't matter which side you pick. They're both fucking evil scumbag pieces of shit regardless. Even if it's a woman ends up being president. It's gonna still, life still ends up being the same fucking way. You're living in a la la land. You think anything will ever have changed in my personal opinion. Anyways, um. We're getting some more positive, cooler news. And this is cool because Sony is going to be the one that Sony Pictures, movie side of Sony, not the PS5 version. They've been screwing up a little bit on censorship a lot for the past what, six, seven, eight years, unfortunately. So at least their movie side isn't going all wokeism and all fucking political, thank God. Hopefully it stays that way. So this comes from Dexerto. Craven the Hunter release date, cast, plot, trailers, and more. This comes from Joe Finnegan from, um, what's it called, um, Dexerto. Craven the Hunter is set to hit screens later this year. So here's everything we need to know so far from its release date to its cast, plot, and R rating. So yeah, Craven the Hunter is directed by J.C. Chandler Chandor. Surprisingly choice for the Spider-Verse film as he is one of the slightly less, lesser known Spider-Man villains. However, considering popular Venom, is, Venom movies have become both ironically and unironically Seems Tony is hoping for another hit, one that will be very violent, which stars <clears throat> da, 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 star Aaron Taylor Johnson revealing from the movie will be Sony's first R-rated Marvel film, which introducing footage of some kind. Now that's actual lie. That one that Hugh Jackman did as Logan, that was the first R-rated movie. I think it was that and Deadpool were the first two R-rated movies Marvel did at that time. And I think Disney bought her like a year or two after that movie came out. Like five, six years after. Actually, no. Four or five years after the Deadpool movie came out. So this is like the third rated R movie. Or fourth. So I think they had that with the other one that failed really, really badly. That had Jared Leto in it. What was it called? Um, Dr. Some Mo Mobius? Morbius? So, and then that dude, Aaron Chandler Johnson, is going to be it. I've only ever seen him in three movies. The first older movies from like 2009, 2010, or 11. One that had Nicolas Cage and then later on Jim Carrey won it. Kick-Ass 1 and Kick-Ass 2 and everyone's pretending to be a superhero, but they're just regular people. They have no superpowers or powers and abilities or any of that shit. And then the other one, um, after Kick-Ass 2, was years, years later, the one that had Brad Pitt in it, the one I went, literally only saw last year, not that long ago. The Bullet Train movie, the one that had um, the dude that was in Marvel's Eternals. I forgot that book. Is that African-American black dude or from UK? I remember he was in it. And then that chick Zazzy Bass that was in Deadpool 2. And then I remember the Walking Phoenix Joker movie. And then uh, who else? And of course, obviously, Brad Pitt, the biggest, ginormous, one of the top five, top ten biggest actor celebrities out there in Hollywood, obviously. That's the last time I saw that dude Aaron Chandler Johnson movie was that movie, Bullet Train. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's awesome. I swear and hope and fingers crossed this shit ain't political. It hasn't been so far. Sony Pictures have been doing really, really good avoiding. All that political bullshit. I hope they continue that. It's probably still going to be, you know, Freemason, Devil Worshipman, Illuminati, Satanic crap. Symbols, unfortunately, are still going to be in there. No, I'll tolerate that bullshit, much as I hate that. Like, I, I haven't got a choice. 
as long as there's that in the action and adventure and really really cool stuff about it and it's one of spider-man's like enemies too so it might be really really huge who knows that's all i gotta say for now i'm out of here like subscribe to out alone cartel the side and that's it peace out ladies and gentlemen and bros women and boys and fingers as always my friends talk to me too morning i'll see you when i see you guys today good night wherever you're at in the world out there Stay tuned for future channel change, good video game news, and my news, which is your drama news, on the Elon Musk news, YouTube drama news, of course, um, TikTok drama news once in a while, and of course, celebrity gossip news I talk about once in a while on this channel as well. And of course, reaction views like this one. Peace out, my star crowd, lights and mice, beautiful side, take it easy, I'm gone, I'm out. Lights and bye, I'll talk to you soon. Stay safe, I'm out of here, and don't take any of the jab or any of the poker, the nanobites, hydro, later.